Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys, and today we're gonna to be talking about the differences between the gimbal head and the fluid head. How are they built, how are they different, and most importantly, are they for you? Right after this. I've taken a lot of topics from the viewers, and one of the topics that had come up is, what's the difference between a fluid head and a gimbal head, and is it right for me? Should I be making this investment in a fluid head over a gimbal head? So in this video, I'm gonna explain the differences between the two, a little bit about how they're built. Most importantly, I wanna to get to who they're for. Now in this video, this is gonna be part one. There's a second part of this that's actually gonna compare a bunch of fluid heads, all the way from $200 up to 1,000. And really what I wanted to see is, at what price point do you start getting this really good value for a fluid head? So stay tuned for part two on that one. But for this one, a little bit more of who is this right for and how are they different. So to do that, I'm going to compare. I've got, um, I'll, I'll walk through the equipment real quick. I've got the ProMedia Katana Junior on Robus tripod legs on this side. And on this side, I'm using a uh, Manfrotto fluid head. It's the 502. I'll put the information down below. And I've got a set of Robus legs on this as well. I will talk about some of the things um, about the actual setup as well in this video. You might find this really helpful if you're kind of curious about fluid heads and how they work. Um, stay tuned because I think you're going to really, really find this one enjoyable. So the first thing I wanted to discuss in this was how are they built and a little bit about the differences in each. I, I don't have this one mounted yet. I am going to mount this because I'm going to show you an adaptation for this. If you're using fluid heads, um, stay tuned because I'm going to give you a quick adaptation of, of what save you some money and some expense, uh, but also just ease of use. So on this side, I've got a, a gimbal head. Now I've done dozens of reviews on gimbal heads. I, I just want to tell you primarily how this one works and what it's intended for. Most wildlife photographers have been using gimbal heads for years and years and years. You can use a ball head. There's a, other types of heads out there, but for most part, people are using gimbals, fluids. Some people are still using ball heads. I shouldn't say still using it, but that's their preferred method. Um, the one thing about ball heads is they just flop around a lot. It is not my preferred choice for wildlife, but I do have a video on ball heads and how you can adapt them a little bit to make them a little bit more stable. So if you're curious about a ball head, it actually is a pretty good multi-use device. It does everything, but it doesn't do anything really great. Uh, but check out that video if you're curious. Now the gimbal is designed essentially by gravity. And both of these units have a panning function, so left and right, and a tilting function up and down. The primary difference is that this is going to be based on its center of gravity, so meaning that this, this tilting up and down is going to occur around the fulcrum. So the center of gravity and a good system is going to be balanced just right, and gravity kind of holds the whole thing in place. Nothing fancy. What you're paying for typically is the machining and the processing and kind of the construction, the quality of the unit. These units run anywhere from $100 up to $1,000. This particular unit runs around $650. I'll put all of the information down below, so if you're curious, I'll put some of the information down there. So, center of gravity. And the second part is, how does this lock out? How is the friction or resistance controlled? And that's all done by tension. And I'll show you down here quickly uh, how this looks on the panning feature. Each model might be a little different, but in this one, you're gonna turn a knob and it's gonna add friction down here and it's gonna make it stiffer. So it's gonna make it a little bit harder to control. So that's a friction-based resistance. There's two types of resistance here primarily. One where a thread is just going to push in, so you're gonna tighten it down, it's gonna create friction, it's gonna eventually lock it out. Another one involves a C-clamp and that's the style that ProMedia uses. That's my preferred method. And the C-clamp just provides an even tension around it. So as you tighten, this clamp tightens around. It actually does it on both axes. So it does it here, and there's also a resistance knob here, and that will eventually lock it out. Again, C-clamp or just pure friction will lock it out. Some of the differences in this, one of the big variabilities on gimbal heads is that some of them are really, really fluid and, and provide a lot of adjustment. I personally like that style. Some of them, they basically lock out, and then as soon as you unlock it, it's loose. We would call this, by the way, frictionless. So there's you can see, I could, I, I've done videos where I just spin this around in circles. It's really, really, really smooth. Uh, best use, you know, birds has some great applications. Birds in flight, really, really smooth. And then again, you can lock this out. So if you're shooting something stationary, you can lock it out wherever you want. Now watch what happens when I put this into a position and watch how gravity, when it's balanced, just holds it there. So there's not a lot of friction on here, but it's just, it's just gonna hold it still. Gravity's doing all that. The center of gravity balanced on the fulcrum, and it's good. 
much different than this style over here. So one more kind of little thing about gimbals, and this is typical, it is not of everything. Because gimbals are designed more for photography, you will find that they usually have an Arca plate and an Arca clamp system. So down at the bottom of this, I've got an Arca Swiss plate mounted to the Promedia Gears Arca clamp. That is different than most, not all, but most fluid heads. So that's basic construction of this. I'll get into some of the other differences in just a second. Let's look over here. Now, I told you about that Arca Swiss system. So before I even get anywhere, I, don't wanna, I do wanna talk about how these are generally mounted. Most fluid heads are gonna use a Manfrotto-based clamp and plate. That is different than what most photographers use for their Arca systems. I'm gonna show you an adaptation. I will mount this up for you, but I just wanted to show this before I mounted. I've got a small adaptation here that I've created. It's a Manfrotto plate. And then I've added, I believe this is about a hundred millimeter Arca Swiss clamp. So to convert this very quickly, and there's several companies that make this, they range in price from $15 all the way up to a couple hundred. My recommendation is at least 70 to 80 millimeters long. You could go up to 100 or even 150 millimeters long. The length isn't as important. So I'm gonna slide this in, and this is the Manfrotto system. Let me make sure I have this going in the right way, yep. So I'll loosen this up. There we go, slide that in. And then I'm gonna tighten it down. So now the Manfrotto part is tight. And now I've got it on an Arca plate. Again, for me, I've used this setup for about a year. I've, uh, by the way, both of these are owned by me. So no affiliations. This isn't loaners, these aren't gifted. I own all of the equipment here. Um, the Robus feet were donated to me, but the actual gimbals that I'm talking about today, these, these are purchased. So I get to give you a really honest review uh, of all of the products in this video. So now I've got my Arca system, my Arca clamp onto the Manfrotto, and I'm gonna add my camera. Now, this system over here is my heavier system. I did that on purpose. That one weighs, weighs about 15 pounds. This one weighs about 10, and I'm just rounding these off. I'm gonna balance this, and I'm now I'm gonna tighten up the Arca plate. If you've got a Manfrotto foot, you're good. And the reason is because most videographers use a Manfrotto system. Most photographers use an Arca Swiss system. There are some fluid heads designed with Arca Swiss, more to come in this series, so stay tuned for that. And now that this is mounted, let me just show you some of the differences of how this works. Um, the first difference I talked about was how the center of gravity holds true. So in here, the center of gravity is around the fulcrum. In every fluid system, with the exception of a, a product called a fluid gimbal, which is this style, but with a fluid um, drag system. I'll explain that in a minute. But every other system is gonna to be top mounted. So the weight is on top of the fulcrum, which is down here, all right? So it's top heavy. We'll get into a lot more of this later because when we get into pros and cons, we're gonna talk about that. The other main difference is how the resistance is controlled. I, I told you with these systems, it's generally friction. So it's just tension. In this system, it's a little different. So it's called a fluid head because inside these tilting and panning mechanisms is a cartridge. In that cartridge is a fluid. It's probably something pretty viscous. Think, think more grease than water, something that's got some resistance to it. And as we wanna add resistance, and right now you can see this one spins really fluidly, I will probably turn some sort of knob. So on this one, the Manfrotto, I'm gonna turn this and I'm gonna add drag. And as I do, it will start, and you'll see it tighten up here in a minute. You see it starting to tighten up? It's gonna to start to tighten up, so it gets a little harder to move back and forth. In a fluid system, this resistance is called drag. Now, drag is not a bad thing. We actually like drag for video because it creates very smooth panning and tilting. That is a little different than these gimbal systems where panning and tilting, especially for video, can be a little herky-jerky. So, we've got a top-mounted system, we've got a fluid-based drag system, and we've also got the difference in that some are Manfrotto-based and some are Arca plate, or Arca Swiss system developed. Now, before we get into the next part, I do wanna talk about one specific difference, sometimes in fluid heads. So on the bottom of these tripod legs, there's an adjustable plate that comes on and off. There's actually a little plate that looks like this. It's flat, that's the standard. And that's what I've got both of these mounted to. The Manfrotto, for the record, comes with a flat base. It does not come with a leveling base. I'll explain that in a minute. 
Most gimbals do not have a leveling base. You can purchase one. So here's what I'm going to show you just real quick. I'm going to take the flat plate out of this one, for example, and I'm going to substitute it. These are 75 millimeters. These bowls come 75, 100. There are some oddball sizes, but those are the most popular. And then I've got what's called a leveling plate or leveling base. It's a half ball. And the way this works is this half ball unscrews and it threads into or goes inside of this bowl. And then you get the option, whether it's a for photography or for videography, you get the option to quickly level it out without adjusting the legs anymore. Now, adjusting these legs, you can do it through the legs. It's just a lot harder. But imagine this just opens up and you get about 15, 20 degrees worth of range here. And so if it's a little off, it quickly tightens. For video, that's critical. For video, you want everything even and smooth. I will be honest, with photography, because we often crop a little bit, if your horizons are a little off, a couple degrees, it's probably not going to hurt your final image because it's very easy to rotate and crop. So as long as you're within a few degrees, not a big deal. With videography, if you're panning and the horizons are off, if you're a little bent forward and the horizons are off, it looks really, really odd. And to crop a video may not be as ideal as it is to crop a still. So just something to think about. This system, if your, if your fluid head is a flat base and you want to get a half ball, this system could cost you anywhere from $100 to $200. So it, it's another expense to get that. While this fluid head is a flat base, many of them are not. We'll deal with more with this in the second video. Uh, this is a fluid head by a company called Sure. Don't challenge me on the pronunciation. You could see the half ball on this is actually built into the system. So you're getting that as part of the fluid head. There's, a, there's an advantage of that. I will tell you the downside for somebody thinking, well, I'm just going to get a, a half ball leveling base and put it on my tripod. And whether I'm doing video or videography, I'll use it. The disadvantage is this half ball will often hang down low. And so low angle photography using a tripod becomes impossible. So that's something to consider. They do make above uh, mounted leveling bases. So they make a little leveling base that sits on top so it doesn't have that below. So you could look into that as an option. But again, this is the most popular, this half ball leveling base. Some of the fluid heads will come with it. Some of them like this Manfrotto are flat base. So just something to remember. Now, the next obvious question <laughs> probably becomes like, which one is right for me? Like what are, what are the practical differences? So here's what I've, here's what I think I've learned over the years. I've been a photographer and I've started to do more and more video. And what I found is that with video, these gimbal systems aren't great. They're really good for photography. So if I was rating this out for photography, let's call this one an A. It's probably, I think, one of the best gimbals made. So we'll call it an A. For video, how is this? Well, note when I'm changing and when I'm adding resistance, it's not quite as smooth. That friction-based system is always going to have these little start and stops, and that is really annoying for video. In fact, if you've ever watched video, one of the things that really, really stands out from lesser quality video is any sort of shake, any sort of vibration, and then anything that's not real smooth. Our human eye is really, really keen to adapting to that. So if you're shooting video, the gimbal might only rate out as a C or a D for shooting video. Now let's look over at the fluid head. The fluid head for video could easily be scored at an A or a B, depending on the actual fluid head itself. For video, an A or a B. Now for photography, maybe it's not as perfect. I mean, maybe this top heavy part isn't as great. The Arca Swiss system, we might have to adapt. The drag, mm, how's that? Not really that bad. For photography, it's actually not that bad. It might, it might be a B for photography. So one of the things I've tried to rationalize is that if I'm doing 90% photography, the system that's probably right for me is the gimbal system. I can still do some video, but it's probably going to be a little bit better for photography. If I'm doing video, there's almost no doubt that a fluid-based system is going to be better for me. So if I'm doing 30% video or 40% video, this system is probably the right call. And if you see yourself moving in that direction, I would encourage you to look at some of these fluid heads. Make sure you watch part two. A lot more review in here. And, and just a little bit of a prelude to that video because I've already tested a lot of these. This Manfrotto is a great value 
at sometimes as low as $150 or $180. Check out B&H, they're often on sale. I'll put a link down below. But it's not necessarily the best fluid head that I tested under $500. There was a couple are in that four or $500 range that I really, really liked. And let me show you why and one of the dangers of a fluid head. With a system that is heavy on top, there's a, a structure called a counterbalance. And a counterbalance means that as this goes forward, remember, it's not balanced on the fulcrum. As it goes forward, as it's top heavy, something is gonna attempt to pull it back. So think of a spring. It's gonna go forward and there's a spring constantly trying to pull it back and it goes backwards and the string, spring is constantly trying to pull it forward. So in that system, the counterbalancing is very, very important, especially with long, heavy lenses. This Manfrotto, when tested, would only counterbalance, forget what it says on paper, it says eight pounds. I don't, I don't even think it got up there. It was like five or six pounds it would counterbalance. Watch what happens with a 10 pounder. I'm gonna turn the drag I'm gonna turn it off first so you can see it really exaggerated. And I'm gonna unlock it. Uh, this Manfrotto has an unlock in the front. It's a little hard to get to. Now, I'm gonna unlock it in the side. So this is the tilt lock on this side. And this is the drag on this side. Again, just dials. As I lean it forward, even if it's balanced, it's gonna flop. If I lean it backward, it's just gravity. The center of gravity is way up here. As it gets beyond this midpoint, gravity takes over. If I tighten the drag on this, so let's go all the way up on the drag, as much as I can. Let's see if it holds now. Well, a little bit, not bad, right? But you, you walk away, you're not paying attention, and all of a sudden, I don't know if you could see this, it's actually creeping down. And if I were to walk away with full drag, this system is eventually gonna fall. You can probably start to see it. I'm gonna put my hand here so I don't lose it. You can probably start to see it happen, right? That's full drag. The Manfrotto doesn't have a counterbalance option. It is, it is not adjustable. So the counterbalance is what it is. On many other fluid heads, the counterbalance option is adjustable, so you can turn it up. And on some of these fluid heads, I find that 10 pounds is no problem. 15 pounds, no problem. For some of them, 20 pounds was a struggle. I had one up to 25 pounds. And it's still counterbalanced with a 25 pound load on top. So it's highly variable from fluid head to fluid head, but that top heaviness can definitely be a factor in photography. If you were already owned a gimbal and you're looking for a budget option, I would say check out this Manfrotto because the price is just so good. The action on it when tested, even against high range um, fluid heads, was pretty good. It held its own, panning and tilting, up and down, drag, everything was really, really smooth. It really suffered from the counterbalance. So that was the big downfall. The structural design isn't the best in the world, but it's certainly not bad. And again, for $150 or $200, hard to go wrong with this fluid head. Now, the one other thing I wanted to touch on before we head out is just one of the other differences, and that's weight. Because it is a consideration. Most gimbal heads are going to go between two and three pounds. Now, I say most. I have tested gimbals that are slightly lighter than that. I've also tested one that was, I think, six or seven pounds. So they can get extremely heavy. I will tell you the vast majority are between two and a half and three pounds, the vast majority of gimbal heads. That is, for the most part, a hikeable weight. So you can put that tripod on your shoulder and you can hike out with it. For the fluid head, while this particular fluid head is around three pounds, many of them go up to five, six, seven, eight, nine pounds. They can be significantly heavier. So for the fluid heads that, that like this long gear that are really built structurally have good counterbalance, you may find the weights to be closer to six or seven pounds. So while there's these other differences, there can also be a big weight difference. So when we talk about in the next section, who is this for, I am gonna keep that in mind because if hikeability is something you're concerned about, you really do need to be concerned about the fluid head, which one you pick, and you may often find that a gimbal head is lighter for you. So when you talk about pros and cons real quickly on the gimbal, I would say the biggest pro is that the center of axis is balanced and the whole system is balanced when, when set up correctly. So that's a huge plus. It generally is Arca plate compatible. So for most photographers, that's gonna be a bonus. Um, it can be a little bit lighter for the most part than fluid head. So that's another advantage here. And then weather, overall weather and temperature is not greatly affected. All metal is gonna be somewhat affected by temperature, but you won't notice it as much with a good gimbal. Um, a lot of fluid heads, because there's a fluid, a viscous fluid in there, as temperatures drops, that fluid can actually become even more viscous. So you might notice some differences there. 
Now the cons, the takeaways for this, for video it's not as good. It's just not as smooth for video and that's a pretty big con if you're doing a lot of video. It also may not be as variable so when you're dialing in that tension over here with the knob on the on the Pro Media, as you're dialing in this tension what you might find is it doesn't adjust nearly throughout a spectrum as well as this. So that's the pros and cons for the gimbal. Let's look at the fluid head and for the fluid head the pros are pretty obvious. It's just smooth. It's much smoother for video and it's got generally speaking better variability. Now in the next video I will talk about this concept of frictionless and continuous. On this one I've mentioned this before. This is continuous which means it doesn't have a starting and stopping like click 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 one two three. It just goes through the whole range of uh, tension or drag and then you can take it off and once it's off all the way it is really 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 smooth. So I'm gonna just zero this out and show you. I'll untie this. Gosh, this, this one lockout in the front's a pain. So if I make this all the way down I've essentially created a frictionless system and again look how smooth this is. Frictionless, right? So a lot of uh, systems will have that. So you get a lot of variability and a lot of smoothness. On the takeaways, on the cons, it can be top heavy. It can be, depending on the, on the model, it can be much heavier. And for photographers this Manfrotto plate may not be ideal and you may have to find an option around that. Now I will tell you that Manfrotto, this particular model because it's so popular, there's some third parties like Kirk that make a plate that you can just change out. So you change the whole system over to Arca plate. That does add another expense somewhere around $100, $150 to get that upgrade. You can use my modification which is what I've done. Uh, this modification will cost you significantly less. It might cost you as low as $50. Um, it could be as much as $100 or $150 depending on the, the actual clamps that you use. But anyway, it's a modification. And just this last summary, who's it for? Is it right for you? Here's what I'll tell you. If you own a great gimbal and you're looking for modest video, you may want to look at a value option like this Manfrotto. A very good option again at the price point. If you're upgrading, if you're changing your system, so you've got a less expensive gimbal and you're ready to invest, I would say a minimum of $500. You, you may want to consider moving to a fluid head and here's the criteria I have established for myself. If I was using video less than 10% of the time, I would stay with a gimbal. If I was doing video more than 30% of the time, I would move 100% to a fluid head. I would just do all of my photography off of, flu off of a fluid head. If you've got two tripods, yeah maybe you can get away with having one for each. I'm very fortunate that I can do that. Uh, I will tell you based off of this one I'm actually I, I've done some reviews on this. I think I'm going to upgrade this one to a better fluid head. Watch part two to tell you which one. So 90% photography I like the I like the gimbal. Only 70% photography, 30% uh, videography. I, I like the fluid head because it, it does a very acceptable job with photography. The things I'm going to look for is just making sure this counterbalance is strong enough to support my weight. That's critical. Watch part two to find out which ones are and which ones aren't. Um, and that's my video for you today. If I missed anything drop it down in the comments. If you like this, if you found it helpful, put it down in the comments as well. If you're interested in a specific follow-up video, let me know. I've got a, a product video coming up and I've got a comparison coming up through price ranges. I've got a lot of videos coming up about fluid head. So stay tuned for this one. As always, I appreciate your support on the channel. Hit the subscribe button down there, the bell for notifications. And as always, I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.